sequence would you want to examine next would you, to help you decide what it is? Is it a post-contrast T1, T2-weighted sequence, post-contrast fat sat T1, or gradient echo? So now we're going to start the clock again. We have 10 seconds. Okay, is it one post-contrast T1, two T2-weighted image, three post-contrast fat sat T1, or gradient echo? Good. So now I can teach you a little something. This is good. So the answer is a T2-weighted sequence. So here you go. We already saw the tumor in pre-contrast T1. Looks, you know, pretty well defined. Look at this lesion now in the parotid gland. It is so bright. It is bright like a light bulb. Look at how it matches the uh, signal intensity of CSF. This is very important. And then this is nice. It enhances. It could enhance variably, but... The whole point of this is the T2-weighted sequence. So now that you see this, what's the most likely diagnosis? Is it benign mixed tumor, Warthin's tumor, mucoepidermoid carcinoma, an obstructed parotid gland, or metastatic disease? We're going to start the clock, and you have 10 seconds. One, benign mixed tumor, two, Warthin's tumor, three, mucoepidermoid carcinoma, four, obstructed parotid gland, and five, metastatic disease. Very good. All right, so I don't have anything to teach you. This is a benign mixed tumor. And um, what is this? It's, it's the most common tumor of the parotid gland. So you know what? If you see a well-defined solitary lesion in the parotid gland, even if you don't even look at it beyond being well-defined, if you guess it's a benign mixed tumor, you're going to be right most of the time. But there are some features that are important to remember. These tumors, um, they have, they're slow-growing and they're painless, and they present as a cheek mass. Even if they get really, really big, the facial nerve should be intact. Now, they can have a malignant transformation, which is rare, but it does happen. And how do you know that this is happening or suspect it? Is when you see rapid increase in size and or facial nerve paralysis. Now, the other thing on the differential is uh, Warthin's tumor, which is the second most common parotid tumor. It, too, is slow-growing, but instead is generally seen, not always, but generally seen in the tail of the parotid gland. This tumor is a papillary cyst adenoma lymphomatosum, which means it's got papillary elements that excrete fluids. So these tumors can be solid, they can be cystic because it secretes fluid, or it can be a combined cystic solid lesion. Now, unlike our, our original case where it's a woman that doesn't smoke, this is uh, Warthin's tumors are seen in older males and smokers, so that history should have helped tip it off. And um, Warthin's tumors are not uncommonly bilateral or multiple. So here's an example of a well-defined, this lesion happens to be solid, um, lesion in the tail of the parotid gland. This is a Warthin's tumor. Same patient. There's no cystic element in this one, but like I said, it could be cystic, it could be solid, it could be combined. This is the same guy. It's nicely enhancing, and you see a second lesion. He's a smoker. He's an older guy. This is more consistent with Warthin's tumor. Now you have malignant tumors of the parotid gland as well as nodal metastases. And although they can be bright on T2, they're generally not bright like a light bulb. It's the benign mixed tumors that are just screamingly bright. And this is when we're talking only about well-defined um, solitary lesions. But don't be fooled because, you know, mucoepidermoid can fool you sometimes. Because it's mucin-producing, this is a mucoepidermoid carcinoma of the parotid. And note how it's relatively bright, almost as bright as CSF. So, you know, Odds are you see the bright, well-defined lesion, benign mixed tumor, but, you know, it can be other things as well, and they just need to take it out.